Hello there and welcome back to my channel. I hope that you're all feeling well, happy, positive, fabulous today. I hope you're just living your very best lives. I know that times can be tough but please know that things will get better. I don't know who I think I am these days, Mrs Motivation apparently. But So today I am going to be showing you my new kind of everyday makeup routine. My makeup routine has changed dramatically since lockdown because I am not having, oh, like, like I never had to, excuse me doll, like seriously, it's because I've got my window open, let, let me shut my window, oh my gosh. So before lockdown I would always make a huge effort with my makeup if I was going into the office, if I knew that I had meetings, I would always want to look my best. So I would, you know, spend time uh, putting on a medium coverage foundation, I'd do a lot of blending, I would just have everything looking really like as good as I could get it, you know, which by Nikki tutorial standards probably is not great, but by my standards, acceptable but since lockdown happened and since i've been working remotely i have stopped giving any f like seriously i've just i've stopped i've just thought to myself i'm Anita, do we need a medium coverage anymore no do we need lots of blending no 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 so i'm just going to show you today what i have been doing as my makeup routine on an almost daily basis. This is very much of a natural but dewy and glowy and radiant like my skin but better but not full coverage like you can still see imperfections. It's just like a lighter look. You know what I mean? Also in this video I'm going to be sh showing you some of my current favourite most used makeup products. There aren't many of them because you know my makeup routine has massively been cut down to size so there's not really that many products but the products that I'm using are some of my most favourites at the moment so with all of that being said let's jump into it. We're not jumping, we're jumping nowhere. We're going to, you know when YouTubers say let's dive right into it and it's kind of like dive? Who's diving? Are we in the Olympics now? I don't know why I'm so sassy today but another thing that always annoys me you know with like YouTubers oh my gosh the shade it's when they show you the look and they say so this is the look we're going to produce today and I'm going to show you how I've done it and then they jump to you doing it and you just think to yourself well where's the suspense? So we're going to begin um, with moisturising our skin and this is my current new favourite daytime moisturiser, it's by L'Oreal and it's the Revitalift Filler Plus Hyaluronic Acid. I'm a huge fan of L'Oreal moisturisers because um, they're not as expensive as other moisturisers and I just feel like they do a good job and I do feel like L'Oreal, they've, they've been around for years so I feel like they should know what they're doing. So with this particular moisturiser, less is definitely more. I just get a blob on my finger. I focus it around, you know, my kind of T-zone, uh, like my, my pores around my nose because the thing that I really love about this moisturiser and why it's a really, really good base for what, whatever you're going to put on top is um, that it definitely does kind of have a smoothing effect so it kind of fills in your pores so it kind of acts as kind of like a smoothing primer but it's also a, a kind of hydrating moisturizer and um, I'm just going to get a little bit more but I do find that if I if I apply too much of this it can look a little bit strange you know I'm just focusing around my problematic areas, which is my entire face, you know what I mean? I always feel like facial envy when you've got these YouTubers saying, I just focus it on my problematic zones and they just go into the side of, the, of their nose and I'm thinking, you know what I mean? Okay, so now that we have done that and I feel like my skin is, is ready, for something else. I go in with one of my favourite products of recent months and this is the um, Glow Cherie. This is a liquid illuminator, again it's by L'Oreal, I promise L'Oreal they're not paying me. 
I really wish they were. Could you imagine? I would love to be on L'Oreal's payroll. I'd, I would be living my very best life, but I am not. But I really, really love this illuminator. So this is in the shade Medium Glow. I have tried the light version and the light version is definitely more of your typical kind of like blinding illuminator so it it looks a little bit less natural i would say like you could definitely see that you've added on uh, an illuminator whereas this one in medium it has more of a subtle bronzed glow and i just feel like that creates a more kind of natural sun kissed look i also think that this one has a little bit more coverage in it i feel like this is more of a kind of bb cream almost because it definitely is not without coverage i just get a little bit of this uh, this costs 9.99 but boots and super drug pretty much always have like three for twos on l'oreal so like i would recommend if you're going to go in you could, I don't know if that crosses over like skincare makeup, but they always have three for twos. And I've got another L'Oreal favourite I'm going to show you in a minute. So if you did want to get it, like get the deal, get the deal. Look at me. I feel like I should be on L'Oreal's payroll right now. I really feel like I should be. Get the deal. I'm sorry, who, who am I saying that? I don't know. But this is what she looks like. I should have applied a little bit so you could have kind of seen her go on. But that's what she looks like. She actually looks like a very glowy foundation actually can you see so anyway i just pop on. i just pop her on do you know what i should do one side first i'm gonna do that i'm gonna do one side first the good old youtube one side first technique you know so that everyone can see how shit your other side actually looks <clears throat> so i'm always very big on getting this like right under my eye because I want it to try and cancel out some of the darkness I have under my eye which just screams to everyone I stayed up too late just scrolling through TikTok last night to get it on the chin I've got a couple of whoppers like this one especially like I just feel like he has just bought some land on my face and he said I'm going to just build a development here we're going to have a shopping mall we're going to have a skate park we're going to have a hamburger joint you know we're just we're just we're, we're taking up the real estate down here you know I just don't think that spot is ever going to go on my deathbed the spot will be there he'll be the only thing thriving you know on my deathbed voila so we have one side done and one side not i know it's very subtle and even me i'm kind of looking at my face thinking is there a difference but i can assure you there is like if you look over here can you see that glow can you see it and then look on this side just like like what where is the glow like what's going on so i definitely think there is a bronze like just it's not too much it's very natural it's dewy it could it, it could even be natural like to someone else they might look at it and say oh my gosh she's so bronzed over there but it's not too much that's that's the key you want people to look at your face and question is she naturally glowy or is she wearing a liquid illuminator also one day when i get my boobs enlarged like not enlarged i want them lifted they need to have a, a makeover let's put it that way but one day when i actually get my boobs made over i want people to look at them and question are they are they real or are they are they fake i just don't know like because i don't want them to look like super fake i want them to be questionable you know what i mean like mysterious um when i actually went for my consultation this is ages ago to um sort my fucking boobs out i actually said to the surgeon i just want them to leave people questioning are they fake or are they real that's i don't want them to look super fake no 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 oh also i forgot to mention but another reason why i am really enjoying this kind of routine and not wearing a foundation is that i can use my fingers just to apply i don't have to be messing about with sponges and i really don't mess about with uh you know brushes either and that just makes me so happy that i just don't have to have that that guilt anymore about 
you know, when was the last time I actually washed this tool? You know, because I know I wash my hands every day, so that's, that's great. Okay, so next we're going to move on to the lips because I just want my lips to be feeling good. You know what I mean? So, yes, they keep them happy, keep them keep them happy is what I say. My favourite lip product and this is something that I have mentioned uh, previously because I have loved this lip product for so long is the L'Oreal. Uh, oh, look, I can't even read it because I've kind of rubbed the sticker off but yeah, I think it's the Colour Rich Shine. They're like a hybrid between a lip balm and a lipstick. They've got colour payoff like a lipstick but they've got the comfort of a lip balm if that makes sense so for me they're that they're the best of both worlds this particular one which is my favorite shade and um, but i love all of them like i would recommend the whole bunch honestly but this one is in the shade uh, coconut plump and this is this is one of the specific plumping lines i don't know actually how much it actually plumps your lips other than making you know them look very glossy which i think adds a bit of a 3d look it makes your lips feel all tingly and cool and refreshed um so i think just the the gloss look and the tingly feel mixed together just automatically make you feel like your lips are a bit plump do you know what i mean it's like an illusion um i have used this all up as you can see as i've done before nothing will stop me digging in with my fingernail to get more of this out because uh, yeah i really need to get going by so but i can just apply it to my finger look it's fine so this is a beautiful beautiful kind of i'd say it's like a nude but it definitely has kind of a light pink kind of very like subtle light pink tones to it and i just think it looks so beautiful on very natural skin so this is what it looks like mm. oh, oh la, la. i mean obviously it's a lot better when you can actually just apply it without digging your finger in there but this is what it looks like and i just love these i think they cost 8.99 each but again the three for two deal you know you could pick up three get one free um i just love all of these and i would recommend them all next we're going to move on to the eyes and i'm going to be using the tone activator eye primer this is by Clydus makeup and i really really love this so so it's an eye shadow base but it has like a peachy tone to it so for me it's really really effective at eliminating can you see those little lines on my lids this does a great job of um just getting rid of them it just covers them right up and it also acts as a really really good primer for the eyeshadow that i'm about to put on so yeah this is uh, absolutely fantastic i have used lots of other eye primers in my time and i've never really fell in love with any one like i've definitely not been in a long term committed relationship with any of them but this one it's really stole my heart so this is what it looks like it's quite peachy i just get a tiny bit on my finger and then i just tap it on again no brushes just living my best fingering lifestyle I don't like to put concealer under my eyes. I don't like to put concealer anywhere because I just find that it looks terrible on me. Whichever concealer, I shape tape, fecking whatever other concealers are out there. Concealers just don't work for me and especially not under the eyes. I find that they just sink into my lines. They look cakey. It adds 10 years onto my age. So I do not do concealer but what I do do is some of this eye primer. Just like a tiny minimalistic amount. I just kind of dot it like there. Just again to try and neutralize the area and also like add a little bit of brightness. You know? So I just kind of very gently tap, 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 tap. Okay, so we have this side done. And can you see the difference over here? You can, well, you can not really see the veins. But over here, you can definitely see the veins. So it's just neutralized that whole area um, and just made it a lot fresher in my opinion and also under the eye it just added brightness over on this side whereas this side is still not looking like I had eight hours of sleep last night you know so I'm going to do the other eye and then we're going to move on to the 
I don't know, I might do the eyebrows actually. I think I'll do my eyebrows. I'm still just as bad at doing my eyebrows than I ever have been. So I'm probably just going to do my eyebrows and fast forward because I in no way shape or form am qualified to be giving anyone instructional info on how to do eyebrows. I just feel like it would be absolutely outrageous of me to even pretend I can do my eyebrows. So I'm not even going to I'm not going to humiliate myself, honestly. So, okay, so I've decided to put off the eyebrows for now and I'm going to just move straight on to the eyes. Today, as I have been doing since lockdown, apart from a few occasions where I've not, but most of the time I have, I've um, done a powder eyeshadow wing. I have never been good at doing wings and I'm still, I'm not, I'm still not good like I'm still not but I've improved I've improved ever so slightly I found a way that is a lot easier for me and I do believe that if you are a more mature lady or man like this is the problem I have right and I'm gonna just say it how it is I'm not gonna sugarcoat it so when I look at you like this right this uh, is this how my eyes look. But when I, and I'm sure a lot of people are trying to do winged eyeliner, we're looking upwards like this. So if you're looking upwards, gravity is really kind of your friend. It's helping you out. So you're looking up, your skin is slightly taut. You know, you may even use your hand to like pull your skin back. So you draw on your line and it may look perfect. But then as soon as you look back, you know, face on, it goes south, it just goes south and it looks terrible. And it's because your skin is like, you know, come back down, gravity is your enemy now. I have found like the best way to actually try and create a wing is to look straight on. None of this like looking up or pulling your skin um, because it's, it's never gonna work apart from if you're 18, you know what I mean? So I find just look straight on and then this is how your face is actually gonna look you know, after you've created your wing. Um, another great tip that I have come to, to find out is, um, you know, use one of these, like use one of these. So this is the Makeup World's version of bike stabilizers. You know, when you were little, you had the stabilizers to help you along. Well, this is that, but for makeup, honestly. I've just realized I need help. I need some help and assistance. I cannot do a wing, just, you know, freehand. I just can't. I tried i failed a million times and i am not down with that lifestyle anymore mm -mm. yeah so this is the second tip and then the third tip is using a powder so i think with a powder it's just a lot more forgiving than if you use a liquid eyeliner you know if you make a mistake it's easier to wipe off and start again and i in my opinion i think it looks really really good and it still lasts all day i've got my shield here i'm just going to tap it a little bit on my hand because this is the stickiest eye shield ever like ever and it rips off all of your makeup so okay so i'm going to look at myself like face on and i'm just going to apply this where i think i want my wing to be look and this may fail this may not turn out great because like I find that my makeup is so inconsistent. Sometimes I'll just like hit the jackpot and it'll look great. But then other days I'll just be like, it'll be a massive fail. So this is like the most difficult part for me is just trying to place this in the in the right place. So I think if I kind of put it here, yeah. Okay, that will do because I have very low expectations for myself. Another tip, I think, are we on tip number four now? I just don't know, but I just feel like I, ha I have all of the tips today. So another, another tip um, is to do them both at the same time. Because if you can kind of get these matched up, like, together, I think it helps with symmetry, you know? As opposed to doing one and then going in and doing the other. If you do them both at the same time, it's just easier to try and get them looking even you know now now the key word here is try because with all of the luck in the world it still a lot of time won't be even so i think that's okay i don't know um i always try and judge it by how much space do i have like you know under the eye i think that's like a good good judge of where you're at looking straight on remember look i'm not even using my own advice here 
I'm just going with that. Do you know what, what as well, actually? Eyes aren't always symmetrical. Like, very rarely are they symmetrical. So, I suppose, actually, it's not so bad if they're not 100% matchy-matchy, you know? Um, at this point, also, I do like to just tap out anywhere where that eye primer may have just sank into my lines in my eyelids because that's another thing with being a lady of a certain age you do have little creases like your skin it just becomes very loose honestly i wish when i was like 18 i actually appreciated the tautness of my skin and i wish i just loved makeup then as much as i do now because it would be so much like so much easier Anyway, this is what I do as well, sorry, jumping about all over the place here, but um, in order to kind of set that primer, I just go in with um, a light kind of just off-white shade just to, you know, tap that in there like that. And I also do do this under the eyes as well, but I just wait till I've taken off the eye guards first. Oh, also a very important thing that I've completely neglected to mention for the eyeshadow today we're going to be using the pretty vulgar eyeshadow palette by oh no it's not it's the it's the nightingale oh my gosh you would think I would know the name of one of my very favorite eyeshadow palettes but this is the nightingale eyeshadow palette by the pretty vulgar brand this is what she looks like if you are a fan of cool toned eyeshadows Yes, this is great. I think I'm going to go in with uh, this shade here, which is a very dark, smoky grey. And I'm going to use this um, little dome-shaped brush, which, yes, I've used this every day for the past month. and I've not washed it yet, but it's fine. Um, I don't know quite what this cheek guard is doing stuck to the brush. I did not invite her to the party today, but she has gate crashed. Okay, so guys, let's do this. Oh no, that's too high. That is too high. It really is. Okay. I try and close my eye as much as I can whilst doing this. But then the problem is when I close my eye, my eye kind of wrinkles up, which is, which is fun. I like to kind of look again face forward and I think it's really important to like throughout the application just keep looking face forward because can you see when I look like that you can kind of see the the wing forming but if you look like that that doesn't look quite right I don't think so what I know I need to do now is to create a bit of a thicker line so keeping looking kind of as face forward as I can I'm just going to make that line thicker. Can you see? Okay, so next I want to kind of bring in the uh, black line a little bit kind of into the eye, but I don't want to have like a really thick line. I want to kind of be, you know, working to kind of bring it down, down a little bit. So I'm going to change my brush to another brush of which like I don't know where it is. I might go in with this one actually. Again, this one definitely needs a clean. Another thing you could do at this point as well if you wanted to have like an ombre kind of more subtle look, you could uh, go in with a shade that isn't as dark as the initial shade you use for your wing and you could kind of just blend it into that, you know. Okay, so guys, this is the moment of truth. Are you ready? There we go. I mean, it's not, not perfect, but... It's there, it's not bad, not bad look. Can you see? I'll take it, I will take it. And I just think the, the key, like if you don't listen to anything else in this video, listen to this. Just make sure you look straight on when you're trying to create wing eyeliner. Because if you're doing, doing it like this, it's just not gonna work. Because when your face comes back round to reality, it just won't look right, okay? And I'm not saying that my wing is perfect, but if you saw what I was creating even six months ago, you would say, wow, someone give her an award for improvement, honestly. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna do the other side and then I will be back.
Okay, so there we go with the eyes. I know, not perfect, but yeah, I just kind of like doing it. I like doing it. I like the look. And yeah, I'm kind of happy with it, honestly. So underneath the eyes, I am just going to go in with, I think I'm going to go in with a slightly lighter shade um, of grey. This is like a charcoal. And I'm just going to pop that underneath the my fun. eyes. Oh, why is it gorgeous? I'm to roof that one. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, I see. Wow, brilliant, bud. Okay, so next I do my mascara and I use my all-time favourite mascara, the Lash Princess by Essence. So this mascara is so good that I've I've kind of stopped trying other mascaras at this point because every single one that I try, it just does not in any way compare. This is the best lengthening, volumising, long-lasting, it's also the most affordable mascara out of all the mascaras that I've tried as you know I've tried mascaras that have been 10 15 pounds 25 pounds and they're not a patch on this one so this is my absolute favorite but I cannot stress enough that if you're going to buy this mascara make sure that you get the one in the black tube with the mint green uh, text because they do have a couple of other ones one with uh, black and purple and one with black and orange uh, it's the mint green one that is my favorite I've tried the other two and I just didn't really like them so uh, whenever I'm saying I've got the last princess on my lashes I am referring to this very one and next I want to apply some to my lower lashes however however this is a minefield and I find that I have to be so careful to only apply the minimal amount of mascara to the lower lashes because otherwise it smudges and it just gives me panda eyes nobody deserves to have panda eyes let's face it so what I like to do as a precautionary step to try to stop panda eyes is I apply a little bit of powder just under my eyes just kind of set that area so that it's not oily I just don't want it to be oily and if you'll notice as well I have not used any powder to set my face today and um, I find that with this routine for some reason I don't really get extremely oily and for me being a lady of a mature age I find that the more powder I put on my face the drier my skin looks and then the older I look I find so I, I like to try and not wear powder so again going into the nightingale palette i am just going to get a little bit of the white shade and i'm just going to like tap that just under my eye and this is literally just so that the under eye won't get oily and also i mean it does add a little bit of brightness which you know i'm not hating of course I will always accept brightening under the eyes. So, okay, so now I've done that, I'm ready to go in with the mascara. I like to scrape off as much mascara as possible that is living on the wand because I just do not want to go in with a load of product because then you are guaranteed panda eyes. Like I've still not really found the perfect lower lashes mascara because like let's face it they all just seem to smudge. Oh I said I was going to go in with a minimal amount. Not really a minimal amount is it but oh well guys like oh well. Okay so the final step in my current makeup routine is a little bit of something something on the cheeks. This is definitely not something that I do every day like most days I will just leave my face just like this and that will be it but today because I'm filming and just because I think it will look nice I will go in with a bit of blush. I do do this sometimes but not all the time. Today I'm going to go in with the Here's to Beauty Naked Minimalized Blush. This is in the shade Angelica. I've got to be really really careful because I don't know what happened or actually 
I think the boys happened. I think they may have like been rooting around my makeup drawer one day and they've dropped it and it's smashed. Um, which is very sad because this is one of my favourite favourite blushes ever. This is absolutely gorgeous. It's like an extremely glowy peach. Can you see? I'm just going to pop a little bit of this onto the apples of my cheeks. And you see, just to add a little bit of like something, something, a little bit of a peachy glow, which let's face it, that can't offend anyone. It just can't. It just charms everyone in sight. Okay, so that brings us to the end of this video. I really, really hope you've enjoyed it. I have been wanting to film this for quite a long time, honestly, just because I do feel, did you see me pop the shoulder out then like, let's get this shoulder out let's not hide her away oh no um oh do you know what I've, i need to like highlight my derriere of course oh is, that's not a derriere decolletage decolletage of course i always think of tattoo when i say decolletage anyway so yeah i've been wanting to film uh this video for a long time now but i've just not got round to it um, oh, I think the boys got into this as well, can you see? Hmm, anyway, so this is my, just my Ofra, Ofra kind of highlight trio palette. And this is the darkest shade, it's, it's called Blissful, Blissful. Hmm. So yeah, I yeah, I just wanted to uh, film this video for a while, just to show you what, like, what I've been up to. And I also hope that, you know, I just hope you enjoyed it really. I don't really think I've got much to offer, you know, like definitely not in the way of skills or education, but I do feel like, I don't know. I don't know what I feel actually. I just sometimes wonder like, why would anyone be interested ever in me? But anyway, guys, there we go. Look at her go. Mm. I wish I had a bit of a party to go to or something, but no. I'm just going to go downstairs, make my salad and probably watch Married at First Sight Australia which is mine and honey's, it's our new new favourite, it really really is, we just can't, we cannot get enough, so season 4 just aired in the UK and we've watched it all, we loved it, we absolutely loved it and yesterday honey's, because we were watching the reunion and honey's was like oh how long is this and he did the little dibber thing to see how long it was and he was like what? Only 43 minutes, and I just thought, honey, I have never loved you more than in this moment, honestly. So, anyway, guys, I'm going to go. Thank you so much for watching the video, and I hope to see you in the next one.